Hello, this video is all about hypothesis testing and introduction. So we are done with descriptive statistics. We know how to describe data to measure center, to look at variability, to look at relative standing between things. And now we're moving on to inferential statistics, the fun ones. We have a lot of different choices, but we have to start with this process that we are going to be going through. So before we start, Press pause, 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 and check these ideas. Make sure you understand these words. So confidence level, how confident do we want to be? 95, 99. Significance level is based on how confident we are. So alpha of 0 0.05 matches a 95% confidence level. And if we're 99% confident, then our level of significance is alpha of 0 0.01, essentially allowing for 5% or 1% error. The probability is the p-value. So this goes into central limit theorem and probability distributions. Um, watch that one if you haven't seen it. Critical values are our cutoff values for tests that we're going to do. But really, I prefer doing alpha compared to p-values because that's the same. And then we have whatever calculated value that we do. We have lots of options. All right, so hypothesis testing. This is a procedure that allows us to evaluate hypotheses, shocking, about population parameters based on sample statistics. So we took a sample and we want to compare that to the population. It starts with a research question. Everything in inferential statistics has to start with a research question. And your hypotheses are set beforehand and they are based on that question that you are looking at. It tends to focus on differences, relationships, or associations between variables. So here's a concept. The green and the blue are different distributions. Look, they're different lines, right? What we want to know is, are they significantly different? Are they truly different distributions? Or is it just chance, and they're really part of the same distribution, we just sampled low on the green and high on the blue, and it's really all part of one group. And this is done with looking at the result of our hypothesis test. So there are two different hypotheses, null and the alternative, also called the research hypotheses. So the null hypothesis states that everything is the same. There's no difference between the two groups. There's no relationship between the two things. There's no associations. And all of these testings operate under the assumption that the null is true. So everything's the same, no differences. If we get a result that is very different from what is expected, then we will reject the null in support of the alternative or research hypotheses. But we're never actually accepting the alternative or proving either one. Prove is not a word we use. So we're either going to reject the null or fail to reject the null. Research hypotheses, opposite. So it is going to say that there is a difference or relationship or association. And the research hypotheses can be directional or non-directional. So if it's non-directional, we call that two-tailed, and this will make more sense in later videos. But if it is not directional, then we just want to know, is there a difference or is there not? We don't care which group is higher. If it is directional, we call that one-tailed. And that means we care which group is higher. So non-directional, they are just different. We don't care who's higher. Directional, we care which group is higher or which group is lower. So I want you to stop for a second and practice what would be the null and what would be the alternative hypotheses for these three studies. Pause, 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 pause. Right, so study number one. The null would be that Colorado and California are the same. There is no difference between Colorado and California. The alternative hypothesis would be that there is a difference between Colorado and California. It is that simple, and we would write that in words. Number two. In this case, it would be our two groups are cancer treatments cancer patients and healthy patients. So the null hypothesis is, is there a difference between, sorry, the null hypothesis is there's no difference between cancer and healthy patients. The alternative is that there is a difference. 
Nowhere in here does it say the words like more or less or higher or lower. So in this case, we just want to know, are they different or not different? We don't care who's higher. Study of NBA players compared to national averages. So my two groups here are NBA player and everyone else. The null hypothesis would be there are no differences between NBA players and women in the U.S. The alternative, I think we have a strong argument to say that NBA players are taller than the average woman in the U.S. All right, so here's how this whole thing works. We get two groups that are representative of whatever we're looking at, and we test them on something, whether that is we measure their height, <laughs> we give them a customer satisfaction, or maybe it is an actual quiz. And then we calculate some kind of a statistic, probably a mean, and we compare them. The researcher, that is you, will conclude if the differences are either a result of chance, so meaning that blue and that green were essentially the same one, and it was chance that they looked different, or that they reflect true differences. So that green and that blue curves, those were actually different groups. And then we draw a conclusion, and we move on. So I want you to think back to your science class. I know, a long time ago. What is the scientific method? We start with an observation, and then we move to a question. We're going to come up with some kind of a hypothesis, what we think is going to happen. We collect some data on that. We analyze it in some way. We come up with a conclusion, which leads us to a decision, and probably a new question. This is the same process that we're going to go through in hypothesis testing. So it's kind of a merge between math and science, and we call it statistics. So start to the research question. I keep harping on this, but it's so important. You have to go back to that idea. And then we are going to state the null hypothesis. So group one is equal to group two. We're going to state the alternative hypothesis. Group one is not equal to group two. We have to establish a significance level. How confident do you want to be? For most things, 95%, that's all you need. If it's a medical study, though, it better be 99%. You want to be more confident and have less error if it's medical and you are dealing with lives. Then we select some kind of a test statistic. So this could be a t-test, a z-test, a correlation, all kinds of different options here. We will compute that, come up with some kind of a number, and then we have some value that we have to compare that to. So we run this test, we calculate this value, and then we have to have something to where we would either reject the null or don't reject the null. There usually is a level of significance, so we have an alpha that we're comparing to, to our p-value, and there will also be some idea of degrees of freedom, which we will talk about in further videos. So we compare the two values, and we either reject the null or we fail to reject the null. Easy, right? 